Hi everyone, it's Miss Kim and Miss Laura, and we're back with some more stories. Um, last week was Thanksgiving, so we all just celebrated that. How was your Thanksgiving? It was really good, actually. I got my bag of turkey left over. Feels like I'm still eating leftovers, yeah, but they were good. All of them were good. Leftovers are the best. Yes. The problem is going to somebody else's house. You don't get to bring the leftovers as many home anyway. When we eat the 12, 13 pound turkey at my house, I got turkey left over. I don't really care about the rest of the leftovers, but the turkey is what I wanted. I like all the leftovers. Yeah, no. The, my, my husband and kid can eat the desserts and stuff, but no, I want that. Maybe the mushrooms left over, too. Oh, I forgot you like mushrooms. Yeah, you don't. No, I don't. Sorry. But that's okay. Everybody has different things they like and don't like, mm -hmm. and that's all right. I know. But now that Thanksgiving over, Thanksgiving is over. <laughs> I can't speak today. Christmas is on the way. Yes. Yep. So. And Christmas is a very exciting time, and sometimes when you get super excited it makes it hard to go to sleep or it's the sugar you're on from all of the hot chocolate <laughs> that could be i do love hot chocolate yes hot chocolate the is problem with hot chocolate it also brings snow and ice and terrible things i'm okay with that that's why there's hot chocolate <laughs> to melt the snow right or to make <laughs> to warm you up inside when it's cold outside <laughs> but either way so yes what is your book about and why can't they go to bed no they can't go to bed they don't want, they don't to, want go to, to go to bed. I read if your monster won't go to bed. So this was a step-by-step -step guide on how to get your monster to go to sleep when they don't want to. He's an adorable monster. He's super at the color cute. Look at him. Very colorful. I would totally stay up with that monster. I know. I like his little... Oh, they have the same hair. Yes. I didn't notice that. Yep. That's I cool. It's adorable. I hope you enjoyed that one. And then I read there's a mouse in my house. It's about the, what is it? The mouse and the bear. They don't they, they don't get along real well when they first end up moving in together. But by the end, they're friends, and that's always good. It's actually the second book to like. It comes after there's a bear in my chair, and what's even cooler is there's another one for Christmas coming, and it's called. We disagree, we disagree about, about the tree. tree. So that was another Christmas very cute. one. Yeah. So you'll you'll see that one in a week or a couple weeks. Yeah, that's later. That'll be awesome. Yes. But yeah. So. This is kind of our lead into Christmas, so hopefully you enjoy these books and yep. your Christmas is on its way. Yep. All right. Bye. Bye. If Your Monster Won't Go to Bed by Denise Vega. Time for bed. Who hates those words more than anything? That's right, your monster. But we all know what happens when a monster doesn't get enough sleep. Massive monster tantrums, refusing to join the sneak up and scare your sister game, and falling asleep in his slug mush. Let's review a bedtime routine guaranteed to help any monster drift off, drift off into peaceful nightmare land, rested and ready to play toss the slime ball with the rest of the kids and monsters. Don't ask your parents to help. They know a lot about putting kids to bed, but nothing about putting monsters to bed. It's not their fault. They're just not good at it. Don't bring in your dog to cuddle. She'll bark and whine and chase your monster's tail. And your monster will growl and snarl and chase your dog's tail, which will lead to a monster meltdown. And who wants that besides other monsters? Don't do the monster stomp. Your monster will wiggle his waggle, flick his fur, and clench his claws, and the next thing you know, he'll be shaking his bristly bottom and won't want to stop. And you'll be shaking your unbristly bottom, so it will be a big bottom-shaking, waggle-wiggling, fur-flicking, claw-clenching monster kid stomp, which will last all night. Save the monster stomp for daytime fun. Don't have your monster count sheep. You know what will happen. And sheep aren't good for a monster's digestion. All that wool makes him gassy. Don't give your monster a glass of milk. Monsters hate milk unless it's sour and green and smells like dirty underwear. Burp. 
If you give them sour green dirty underwear smelling milk, they'll stay up all night burping sour green dirty underwear smelling burps. And who wants that besides other you know what's? Boom, boom, crash. I know that's a lot of don'ts. So if your monster won't go to bed, what do you do? Step one, pour your monster a nice big glass of calming, crunchy, oozy bug juice slimed with ooey gooey snail trails. No monster can resist this. And maybe you can't either. Go ahead, take a sip. Step two, give your monster an ice cold shiver inducing bath to relax him and make sure to scrub behind his ears with mud soap. Step three, brush your monster's fangs until they are at their smelly rotten best and don't forget to floss. Step four, Help your monster find his favorite squishy, squashy, can't go to bed without it toy. Put all the other monster toys in your parents' bed. They will appreciate your thoughtfulness. Step five, read the freakiest, creepiest, scariest story from your bookshelf, screaming where appropriate, and watch your monster's eyelids droop. If your monster asks for one more story, shout, no way, and get ready for step six. In the key of screech, sing Shakabai Monster and listen to those gigantic monster snores along with the snores of your family and maybe even the whole block. Congratulations, you've done it. Your monster has officially gone to bed. You are the master of monsters, the captain of creatures, the baroness of boogeymen. You're so good, everyone in your neighborhood will start asking you to help with their monsters. Uh-oh, looks like that dragon won't put on her pajamas and that werewolf won't stop howling and that zombie is annoying the whole family. I know a lot about monsters, but nothing about dragons or werewolves or zombies. I'm out of here. The end. There's a Mouse in My House by Ross Collins. There's a Mouse in My House. How he got in, I'd like to know. He's unpacked all his stuff just so. That rodent can't live here, oh no. I'll tell him that he has to go. Would you believe it? He said no. I'll check him out with one quick throw. But now that he's learned Taekwondo, my body aches from head to toe. There's lots of places he could go, from Luxembourg to Mexico, to Timbuktu or Borneo but he just doesn't know, he just doesn't want to know. Our taste is not the same, although he wears nice boots and fine chapeau. His cape is swell, but even so, why won't this mouse say cheerio? He may be small, but even so, he eats just like a buffalo. Just where he puts it, I don't know. He just left me one pistachio. At night, he dances to and fro, too soft rock on his stereo. He likes to put on quite a show. When will I sleep? I do not know. He's made my bathtub overflow. It flooded the room down below. So now I'm soaked from head to toe. That's it. I'm done. He has to go. If anyone calls, I'm in the bath. M. Knock, knock. Now who is this? I'd like to know. Some folks are outside in the snow. But who'd come here to say hello? Hang on, don't open that. Oh no!
Hey, these mice are nice. To B from M. The end. Oh, they're reading his book. Now it's the end.